Hey, do man. Coach. All right, we are joined by Grambling State and Coach Jackson. If you will just make an opening statement, and then we'll open it up to questions for anybody that's up here. So go ahead. Uh, tough game tonight. You know, we can. My, my hats off to Coach Painter. Uh, does a phenomenal job with the Boilermakers. Uh, I knew they would be super ready to play tonight, and I knew they would come out to half and be ready to ready to compete after we kind of kept it close. Uh, man. Hats off to Zach Eady, man. Just an incredible player. So that was that. That was the difference. Question right here in the front. Hey, uh, Chris Demersion, uh, out of KSLA TV in Shreveport. Hey, Coach Dante, what did you tell your team after the game? Obviously, um, an emotional, emotional run for you guys. Uh, I just let them know uh, there's nothing that they have to hang their heads about. This has been a, a great season for us. The unfortunate part about this is only going to be one team happy at the end, and that's probably going to be the national champions. And, you know, we hope we just lost to the national champions tonight at the end of the day. But I told them they, this has been a historic year for them. Uh, win the SWAC regular season title, win the SWAC tournament title, win the first four play-in game. You know what I mean? For, for a low to mid-major, that's all you can ask for. You can't ask for much. and then. You go play one of the best teams in the country, and you and you put up a, a, a good fight for about about 20 minutes, and you know after that, life kicked in. <laughs> Bob. Yeah, Bob Kravitz with Indy Monthly for Contavious and Tremichael. You ever seen anybody like Zach Eady? I Not mean, and and what? How frustrating was it trying to get him under control? Uh, I don't think nobody's seen that like Zach Eady. <laughs> that. That's kind of unreal. What, he, what they say he is on paper, he's exactly that. Nah, That's Contavious. Yeah. Go ahead, Jermichael. Yeah, he's a big dude, bro. It was kind of hard, bro, uh, trying to get them uh, shots off on him. Uh, right over here. Uh, Coach, Justin Avers show with Sports Capital Journalism. What would you say to other teams that have to play Purdue during this tournament? Uh, I would just tell them uh, they need to figure out how they're going to handle Zach Eady. Uh, and the reality of the situation is I hope you're equipped for it. Uh, we're, we're just not equipped to play. We, we don't see Zach Eady. We don't see anyone as, as physical or as dominant as him. And, you know, the tough part about it is is that when you run two people at him, then he's good enough to kick it out for threes. And it's one of them things that you got to pick your poison. And hopefully you got enough bigs that can – kind of battle with him and, and have enough fouls to, to give and hope he having a bad free throw shooting night. <laughs> right here, Tom. Uh, Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Purdue. You guys, uh, it was 31-27 a couple minutes ago and a half. What was running through your mind then? Uh, same thing that run through our mind at the beginning of the game. We can do this. <laughs> uh, we know we're going to fight and uh, we ain't going to never give up. That was Tremichael. Go ahead, Contavious. Just a lot of hope, man. A lot of hope, man. We fought as hard as we could. Okay. Right here. Yeah, Dante, uh, Ben Baby with ESPN. Just from the being in the first four and then being here in this atmosphere in the arena, playing a team like Purdue, what was this whole experience like over the last three days? And then I'll follow up with that with another question after that. Uh, the experience has been amazing. Uh, for us, it's the first time that – it's the first time in my career that I've been to a Division I NCAA tournament. I've been to Division II NCAA tournaments, but I haven't been to the Division I NCAA tournament. And to actually get, get here and get a win in the first four in, in a really, really intense game and make it to the next site, I mean, it's been an amazing run. And like I told our guys, this, this is something you can cherish for the rest of your life because this doesn't happen for everybody. Right. Secondly, secondly, also, there's been a lot of conversation about potentially uh, either expansion or potentially replacing some of the low to mid-majors with power conference teams. What would that do for, for teams like yourselves and other low, low conference uh, squads who are automatic qualifiers who maybe get squeezed in a potential scenario such as that? Well, I think that's a tough situation because I think you take the beauty of the NCAA tournament out. I mean, look at last year with, with FDU. 
you know, you, you if you replace some of the smaller schools, then you don't you kind of lose that Cinderella story. And even with the fact of, I look at the NIT, you replace a lot of the uh, what is it the turn the regular season uh, title holders, and then you replace them with teams that don't really have great records or didn't have a great season, and then you even got teams opting out, opting not to play. At the end of the day, reward the guys that work for it and give give our give our student athletes something to look forward to because the reality is the big schools get a lot to look forward to. Right here. Hey, Coach. Coach uh, Chris DeVersion, KSLA TV out of Shreveport. Uh, Y'all were the first team, obviously, northeast Louisiana to make the tournament since uh, ULM did, and they lost to Wake Forest in 96. But having a team finally go to the tournament from north Louisiana, what does it do for high school basketball? What does it do for college basketball throughout the region? Uh, it's just like, you know, for us in northeast Louisiana, it's a good brand of basketball that's being played. Uh, from from us winning a, our regular season title to La Tech having a great year, uh, you know, uh, Northwestern had a, had a solid year, and ULM had a solid year, and I just think that it just it just helps the brand of basketball in the area, and just lets everybody know that you know there's, a, a, there's very competitive basketball going on within our region. Coach Kyle with Sports Report Media. Um, after the play-in game, you were very complimentary towards Purdue and Coach Painter. But looking at Coach Painter and the program that he's built, talk a little bit about that, uh, about Coach Painter and what he's built and kind of emulating and how he's been trying to help so many other schools build up their programs too. Uh, you know, I had a chance, you know, to have a brief conversation with Coach Painter before the game. And, you know, I just told him, Hey, Coach, man, you run some great stuff, and I'm always stealing from you. And then he turns around and tells me, hey, don't worry about it because I'm stealing from somebody else. And, you know, he was like, that's what the best coaches do. And, you know, even walking off, he just said, hey, man, you're a, you're a hell of a coach, man. Keep working at it. Keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, Coach Painter has been – from a couple years ago, I met him at the Florida Clinic, and we were uh, kind of invite-only clinic type deal for coaches at the University of Florida. And, Man, just a just a just an incredible guy, you know. Take you under the wing, give you advice, talk to you about all different type of things. So, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Coach Painter and just the program that he built here in Purdue. It's one of the best programs in the country, one of the top, in my opinion, one of the top ten programs in the country year in and year out. So, you know, Coach Painter is a uh, is one of the guys that you look up to and that you want to emulate you know, when you're talking about coaching. Right here in the front. Hey, uh, T. Mike, Chris Immersion out of KSLA TV in Shreveport. Hey, being a Shreveport guy, putting the area on a national stage with the many performances you've had in the SWAC championship game and up to this point, what did it mean to put the area and you being responsible for putting the area on the map? Sure, Michael. Uh, it means a lot. No, I know I uh, came out, did my best, and I know I made the city proud. Anything else? We do have a question. Okay, let's go to Zoom, please. Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com for the student athletes and for Coach. Just what it's been like to represent Grambling on a national stage and to get that victory that puts you in the game that you're in today and to give you the opportunity to show the world who Grambling is and what you're all about, just what that means to each of you. Contavious, we'll start with you. Um, um, it means a lot, man, especially with these group of guys, you know, uh, we've been through a lot this season with each other, and just to see our hard work pay off, man, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a one-on-one -on -one feeling. Coach? It means everything for me to represent Grambling to come up here. Uh, it was a dream for me to be here, uh, coach Division One basketball, and this is where my opportunity came, uh, came at. So. Uh, you just want to come out here and do your best for everybody that you represent. And, you know, Grand family has been highly supportive. So just want to come out here and, and showcase our, our basketball and make sure people are proud of us. Anything else? Thank you, Grambling. Thank you. Thanks.